Good afternoon, everybody. Tomorrow, we're going to remind everybody to bring their shoes of Tisha B'Av. Tomorrow, it's going to be Friday. Motsa'e Shabbat, we cannot already wear leather shoes. We're going to have a special Tisha B'Av shoes that they cannot have leather in them. So but the problem is that the Tisha B'Av starts at 8.45. We're going to start Arvit after Shabbat. And at 8.45, you're already supposed to have your shoes ready for Tisha B'Av. Now, a person cannot go to home and bring with him on Shabbat the shoes for the Arvit because he's preparing from Shabbat for after Shabbat. That's why you're not allowed to prepare on Shabbat. Bring yourself, with yourself the tapachki, the shoes that you need for Tisha B'Av tomorrow on Friday. You're going to bring it with you, put it somewhere, hide it somewhere. Where should we put it, Aaron? Huh? Oh. Usually, yeah, good question. If a person usually wears such a shoes during the Shabbatot of the year, that's okay. But if a person wears tapachki, home uh, slippers, who wears home slippers during Shabbat? No, kasofki, okay. If, if you usually, if it's not going to be recognizable that you are doing it for preparation, you're comfortable in them. That's okay. But something like slippers, Tapachki. This everybody knows you're doing it for the Shabbat. So what you wear on Shabbat, something you're going to use after Shabbat. You prepare from Shabbat for after Shabbat. This is Achana. Not allowed to do this on Shabbat. But the Krasovki, something that it is uh, not recognizable that you're preparing, you're comfortable in them. Since you're comfortable in them, and it's something you use during the Shabbatot of the year. Sometimes you wear them also. You're comfortable in them. It's not showing as a Achana. So therefore, whoever has tapachki tomorrow to bring, make sure you're going to bring it with you tomorrow. Tomorrow is Friday. We're going to have 6.45 Shira Shirim. You're going to bring with you already. So this way, right after Shabbat, 8.45, we're going to start Arvid. We're going to take off our leather shoes. We're going to put our trapachki shoes, the, the cloth shoes, this way. You're not going to have a problem of hachana on Shabbat. Yeah, yeah, put it with a certain name, certain way. In a bag, you can put it over there, over there, no problem, man. Like this, after Shabbat, you have it, ready. Motzai Shabbat, Rabotai, if a person has this year pregnant women and nursing women, we said in the morning, exempt from the fast. Why? Because it's eh? a postponed fast. Postponed Tisha B'Av, pregnant women, nursing women, exempt. Now, if she is exempt, she's going to eat on Sunday. Says the Allah, since she will eat on Sunday, she's obligated to do Havdalah, Motsu'i Shabbat. How she's supposed to do Havdalah? Amul Aaron? Only with wine and fire. No Besamim and no Ana Hashem Oshiana, Ana Hashem Aslihana, all the Psukim of the success of the upcoming year, because it's a disaster. It's something that happened to Am Israel, big disasters happened. Поэтому, если женщина, она пост не держит, потому что она болеет, или она, Баруха Хашем, gave birth, или она кормит ребенка, because of that, she is exempt from the fast. She says she is exempt from the fast, she has to do Havdala, Mutsa'e Shabbat. Now somebody asked me today, he said, Rabbi, my wife is pregnant. He said, He says, Mutsa'e Shabbat, she's going to do Havdala. Can I listen to her Havdala or no? Huh? Says the Allah, allowed to listen. Why? Because the time is Motsa'i Shabbat. Just because nobody is allowed to eat it, drink it, we postpone it for after Shabbat. But if your wife is pregnant, and this year is a postponed fast, she is exempt from the fast. Since she is exempt from the fast, you are allowed to listen to her Avdalah. Now he said, Rabbi, but that's a woman. Woman does Avdalah? Where does it say that woman does Avdalah? I told him, the Gemara in Masechet Brachot, in Dafchaf Gemara says, Amar Rava, Nashim Hayabot Bekidush, Dvar Torah. Women obligated in Kiddush from the Oraita. And the Gemara learns out, Beknisato ubeitziato. You're supposed to remember Shabbat when Shabbat comes in and when Shabbat comes out. So since Kiddush is when Shabbat comes in, women obligated. So too when Shabbat comes out, which is Havdalah, women obligated. So if you have a woman that she's Baruch Hashem pregnant or she gave birth or she's nursing, this situation says Allah, she will do Havdalah, Motsa'e Shabbat. Yes. Husband can say for her, but she will drink it. Right. Yeah. Abdallah also, yeah, good question. A person that is going to feel not well on Sunday, he started the fast. He was thinking, I will be fine. 
as he's going, he feels, that's it, I'm going to faint, I cannot do it anymore. He wants to do, the, he called the rabbi, he called the doctor, they told him, you break the fast. Before he's eating, he has to do Havdalah. Because you cannot eat and drink before Havdalah. So even though it's in the middle of Sunday, because, and which Havdalah is going to say in this case only? That's it. Esh, it's at night time we do. In the synagogue, we're going to have fire over here. Problem, Rabotai, in many synagogues, and every year I announce it to, to the communities, is the distance of the people from the candle. Gemara in Masechet Brachot in Daphnun Aleph says, En mebarchin ala ner, at sheyeotu leoro. You're supposed to benefit from the fire, the light of the fire. Problem, at shelavik at oro, one time sees it. He cannot benefit from the candle over here. Because it's too far. If he's going to have two dollars right now, one dollar from, a, let's say, one dollar bill, another dollar, five dollar bill. Huh? He needs a little bit light to be able to differentiate between the two. If he's sitting very far, the amount of candle that he has over here in the front is not going to be sufficient for him on the back. So he goes like this. You're all the way over there. You are too far from the candle. That's why Mullah Aaron, it's better to have few candles. Three, four candles. In other places I was, I used to tell them all the time, make more than one candle. This way people, 10, 15 people over here, 10, 15 people over there, 10, 15 people over there. This is more Aish, this is more Aish, this is more Aish. Everybody were closer to one another, huh? Napol Pade? So, Tarelka. Tarelka, Anile Fanecha. Put Tarelka and that's it. If you have all 100 people come, Blizzi, you're right. Or do it outside. Put outside candles, people will come. Bore Moraish, that's it. One candle here, one candle there. People will come by. Before Megilat Echa, we're supposed to already say, Bracha Bore Meore Haish. Men and women. Women will, will be in the synagogue, will say the Bracha in the synagogue. If they will be at home, they have to say Bracha at home. If she's fasting, she still has to say Bracha Bore Moreh Haish. Even if she is not doing Havdalah. This Motzei Shabbat, men are going to say Moreh Haish in the synagogue. Women are going to say Moreh Aesh in the house, at home. You have to let them know. Because women don't know that. You coming home, you don't do Avdala, you don't say Moreh Aesh. She goes to sleep. She doesn't know anything. She doesn't know any better. So you have to tell her, Jonam, I said Moreh Aesh in the Kaneso, in the synagogue. You weren't in the Kaneso. You say, right now, outside, there is a, in the synagogue, there is a once in the house. If you don't have, you light one in the house. It doesn't have to be 24 hours like in Yom Kippurim. In Yom Kippurim, we keep a candle before Kippur, and we keep it on until the end of the Kippur. At Ef Kippur. But on Tisha B'Av, we don't need that. Motzei Tisha B'Av, what's that? Motzei Shabbat. We don't need that. Regular Havdalah candle. You light it. Borei Morei Aish. You turn it off. Tamom. Like this, you fulfill the mitzvah of Morei Aish. During Sunday, you are not allowed to take, make laundry. I know usually women's day for laundry is Sunday. But this is Tisha B'Av. So it's a fast day. This is Tisha B'Av. We're not allowed to make laundry on Tisha B'Av. Not before Hatzot and not after Hatzot. The only time the post say you are allowed to make laundry on this upcoming Sunday is after the fast will be over. And usually, the post say you have to wait until the following day to start doing the laundry. But this year, since the, tenth, the fast is on the 10th, the following, after the fast is already the 11th. So you don't have to wait for the following day to wait for the laundry. As soon as Sunday fast is over, that's it. You're allowed to go ahead and do the laundry. Over here, Rabotai, we're also going to have uh, three minyanim. On Sunday, we're going to have 6, PM, uh, 6 a.m. in the morning, 8 a.m., 2 million we're going to have. This way we accommodate all the community members, whoever wants to pray with the fill-in and whoever wants to pray without the fill-in. The custom in the Kaneso was without the fill-in. The community, many members, wants to pray with the fill-in. So we made shalom, everybody. Ose shalom, bim Make everybody be shalom. Huh? We're going to have downstairs minyan, 8 o'clock, with the fill-in. Over here, in the main shul, we're going to have minyan without a filling. At minha time, everybody coming with a filling. There is no issue to wear the filling multiple times of the day. So the, but we have to everybody be together. You're not allowed to have a group of people in the same room doing one thing, group of people in the same room doing another thing. This is asu. This is lota asu, agudot agudot. This is asuma Torah. Uh, first, you have to be careful. You're coming to shaharit, you choose your minyan. You have three minyanim to go. 6 a.m. upstairs. With the fill-in, 8 a.m. downstairs with the fill-in, 8 a.m. in the main shul without the fill-in. You choose your room, whatever you are comfortable with, that's the place you're going to go. Like this, you made everybody happy. At Minha time, everybody are praying in the main shul together with the fill-in. Like this, you fulfilled everybody's opinions, everybody are happy, Minhagim are fulfilled, Arizal is fulfilled. Ose shalom im Rumab, Brahamab, Ose shalom alenu. 
Not only, only that, Rabotai, during Sunday, that's a very challenging day because you're going to have all the kids at the house. Most of them are not in school and not in camps. And you're going to have a problem to travel with them. The Shulchan Aruch says, En masichina da'ad mina avelut b'tisha be'av. You're not allowed to be metayel. You're not allowed to travel, sightseeing. Let me go over there. Let me go over there. Let, let, let me get the day by because it's very hard in the house. You have to be Rabotai, very careful because during Tisha B'Av, this is a, the day that Bet HaMikdash was destroyed. You're not allowed just to travel around to Lilkot Besamim, Lilkot Bagani, Lilkot Besamim. This is Asur. A person has to be careful not to uh, travel and sightseeing during the Tisha B'Av. This is something you have to pay attention Tisha B'Av. You can go, there's a lot of uh, lectures going on in the neighborhoods. There is a Torah anytime. There's other lectures going on online. You can read yourself. That day we're going to have, after Be'azat Hashem Shaharit, we're going to learn a little bit Alachot Avelut. Every year we've been doing that. Alachot Avelut, this is the, the perfect time for everybody to come and get the knowledge of Alachot Avelut. We're going to finish the prayer downstairs. After that we're going to see Shaharit Zakonchitza. After Shaharit, I don't know how long Shaharit will be. It's the first time here, so uh, whenever the Shaharit will be finished, we're going to start Alachot Avelut. starts at 8 o'clock, I believe, 9, 9.15, we should be already done. What's your question, Boris? Oh, good question. Cemetery. Rabotai, this upcoming Sunday, some Bukharians, I don't know other cultures, maybe have also the custom in Hag to go to the cemetery. When you go to the cemetery, you should know, you should be, be taho. The Arizal HaKadosh says, Gaon Mevina brings him, he says you should not go to cemetery if you are not pure. Pure means after Mikve. But if you cannot go to Mikve, it's Tisha B'Av itself, so you're going to have to go either on Shabbat or either on Friday. But then you have to make sure you stay pure, whoever understands what I mean. We have to make sure to stand pure until uh, Sunday if you want to go to the cemetery. If you are not pure, it's better not to go to the cemetery. Because chas shalom, if a person has tum'ah, more tum'ah of the cemetery, it goes on him and causes a lot of problems. He should not do that. Women should not go to cemetery, Gaon Mevinla says, all year long. He says women are very sensitive to spirituality. Something because they are very high level to sp- spiritually, a little bit tum'ah can right away grab on them and affect them. Right away you see they change their mood. Chas shalom become more sad, more depressed. All this, says the Gaon Mevinla, all the ba'ayot, that's his lashon. All the ba'ayot coming on the generation because women go to the cemetery. That's why it's not a recommended thing to do for women. If men that go, you have to know there is a bracha. Asher yatsar etchem badin. Because many people were not there for 30 days. You have to say bracha. Asher yatsar etchem badin. There is a, the length of it is like asher yatsar et adam bechokma post toaleta. Same about more or less, same length. But it's a special bracha you're supposed to say. Whenever you're coming to the cemetery, if you see at the cemetery you were not there 30 days, you're supposed to say the bracha. If you go to cemetery, there is pictures, it's a problem. If you want to say Kaddish over there, you want to go visit over there, it's a problem to say Kaddish whenever there's pictures. So go with the blankets and stuff like that, cover the pictures. Because the pictures over there are a terrible thing. To say that uh, Kaddish next to that thing, pray next to that thing. You cannot pray next to the picture. That's you have to be careful. Those pictures to be vapshe, come out of the cemetery. But if you are going to a place, there is pictures, make sure we bring you yourself, kakoita, blanket like that. And like this, you're going to be able to say the Kaddish over there in the cemetery. After the cemetery, you do Netilat Yadayim up to... The knuckles, you're not allowed to do the full Netilat Yadayim. It's Tisha B'Av. Tisha B'Av, you're only allowed to do the Netilat Yadayim up to the end of the knuckles, not the, the full hand. And then the rest of the day, Rabotai, make sure you learn about the destruction of Yerushalayim. You have to understand what Am Yisrael lost. It's not just a building that was, and it was demolished one day in Tasvidani. This was a big loss. We have to learn about it. There's Baruch Hashem, a lot of lectures. A lot of Divrei Torah are being shared about this topic. Make sure you log in on, online. You go participate in person. And like this, you're going to understand the meaning of what Am Yisrael lost. And Be'ezrat Hashem, Hashem should have mercy on Am Yisrael. Make us see the Binyan Bet HaMikdash B'mirabi Amenu. Mashiach Tzidkenu B'mirabi Amenu. V'chen Yiratzon. Ben Omar Amen. Rabbi Hananiah Ben Akasha Omer. Ratzah HaKadosh Baruch Hu Lezakot Yisrael.